The main forms of communication we have with animals, or let's say the best form of communication we have with animals that I know of, is their sight of us, the way they see us. And by my presence here, I just cause that calf here to turn and look at me at both eyes. When I step back here, I get in, I'm getting in a bad spot. Now if I step over here, he should turn and look at me again. If I step up here just a little bit, it causes him to turn his head and look at me. My position on this calf either causes him to move away and get far enough away where I don't create fear or pressure on him, or if I change my position, they turn their head to see me and try to figure out what I'm doing. Now this black calf that's right here, this is really great. This is really, really important to understand and see. As I step over here behind him, he can't go anywhere, he can't go forward. So what does he do? He turns his head to me. As I walk up closer, I bet he's gonna back out and he's gonna get out of there because he has nowhere to go. And now he'll, now as I step over here, I can ask him to look at me at both, he's, right here he sees me with one eye, just his right eye. As I step forward, see, he turns to look at me with two eyes. That's a really important thing to understand is what your position on that animal does to its head. Because the, the cow follows his nose. And so as I step in here behind, he can't see me. He's got to position himself to get where he can see me. Now he's probably the weakest one in the bunch. He doesn't want to get inside the bunch. They won't let him. We'll see what happens here. Well, he might push his way in there. So he's going to go hide. So now we got another one here. If I step out here, he turns and looks at me. If I step in here, he can't tell what I'm doing back here, so he moves into the herd and hides. And that's real important to understand. In all the teaching that we have working with livestock, cattle or sheep or whatever, you'll, see, you'll hear two main thoughts. And most of them are brought to us by Temple Grandin. And she's been, if you don't know who Temple Grandin is, she was the autistic lady that's done a lot for our industry. And she brought those terms, I think it might have been her that brought those terms, she's promoted them a lot, balance point and flight zone. And if you've heard any talks on beef quality assurance or anything on cattle handling, you've probably heard those two terms, flight zone and balance point. Now, flight zone, if you think about it, if we're talking about low stress handling, and I'm not a big fan of that term, low stress handling. If you have a grass-fed operation that you market three beef a year or 10 beef a year and you harvest them right on the place, then I would call that low-stress livestock handling. And you can pet them and you can feed them out of your hand. That's low-stress livestock handling. But when we come in here to Joplin and they have to sell a lot of cattle in a day, that same type of cattle handling, that low-stress livestock handling, we might as well have a commission yards here because the cattle aren't going to come through the gate. So I call it effective stockmanship. That's what we've got to have, effective stockmanship. And to have effective stockmanship, you have to put enough pressure on that animal to get it to come through that door, go up and down this ring a couple times, and then go back outside. Flow is important with cattle, with anything. So what we want to do is we have to have, be able to put enough pressure. So instead of calling it flight zone, I would maybe re-term it, and I, I, I understand the term flight zone, and that's a good term, but let's just change it just a little bit. Let's call it pressure zone. So I'm pressuring these cattle. I'm not in their flight zone. When I start getting to where they're wanting to run, I just move back. So instead of thinking of it as a flight zone, I'm in their pressure zone. And if you put the right amount of pressure on these animals, they'll learn to work for you very nicely. So instead of thinking of flight, I think of pressure. So now I want this calf to turn around. So I come up here, I ask him to look at me. Now I, I rebalance myself, pressure here, pressure, pressure step back and I've taken the pressure off which means these cattle can walk by me. So it's just as important to put pressure on at the right place in the right time but it's also as you just seen it's just as important to take the pressure off at the right place in the right time. So it's not all about force or pressure it's about pressure and release. But a lot of people take too much pressure off all at once and then the cows just quit you. So it's a thinking man's game or thinking woman's game, thinking handler's game. You're always trying to figure out where and how much pressure to put on. 
Now, how do you know that? We can, we can get you a manual and we'll write and tell you where to do it. But that's not going to work out very good for you. Because this these cattle are the only ones that can tell you what to do. And so when people want to work cattle and just talk on the cell phone and walk behind them, they don't they can't think about that enough things to keep it good. So for me, if I want these guys to move off, I'll I'll pressure. This is pressure here. And what I'm doing is I'm creating pressure on these cattle back here, which is going to create pressure on the ones in the front. And then they move to the other end pretty nice. Now I can walk up with these cattle, keeping the pressure on and keep them moving in. They, they, it's kind of like dominoes. They just keep pushing themselves in. And that's a good way that these cattle learn how to work. So I'm really not trying to work the whole herd. I'm just trying to work the leaders either to get them to draw the other cattle or if I'm on the back, I try to get these cattle to push the other cattle. So you're always using your herd, if you have a herd, to your advantage. So that's pressure. Instead of flight zone, I call it pressure zone.